Okay, so just to first set the stage of uh, what kind of problem we are trying to address. So atomic force mic microscopy or AFM is a method uh, for imaging incre incredibly small objects like uh, even going to the level of individual atoms in molecules. However, uh, this method is mostly constrained to this kind of uh, relatively flat uh, geometries at the moment. And if we try to go to these more three-dimensional kind of uh, structures, then it gets incredibly difficult to inter interpret the uh, image. Now, uh, in deep learning, there have been all these tremendous uh, advances uh, in computer vision, language processing, playing games, uh, and all these things. Uh, for uh, us, this uh, kind of interesting thing is this image recognition task uh, and the convolutional ne neural networks that have been used for this task. So our goal is to uh, combine AFM with deep learning uh, to try to uh, get this, uh, this uh, more uh, precise so sort of properties from the AFM images. The kind of things that we are uh, interested in uh, are for example, the spatial structure, the positions of the atoms, chemical properties like uh, the electrostatic or the elements uh, of the atoms, and maybe even tell which molecule we have imaged. Uh, and now to just briefly describe uh, what kind of method AFM is. So these kind of tra traditional type of uh, microscopy methods are more like seeing that there's some particle coming from the sample. Uh, and we detect these particles, but AFM is more, more like touching where we have this um, incredibly sharp tip uh, which interacts with the sample uh, by some force interaction, and then we actually measure this force interaction between the sample and the tip. Uh, a typical method used uh, is this uh, frequency modulation AFM, where we drive this cantilever at some frequency uh, and some amplitude, and then we measure the frequency shift uh, that is caused by the force interaction between the sample and the cantilever. And one other uh, important uh, aspect about this method is that this idea of a tip functionalization, where we put some molecule like a CO, uh, chlorine, xenon, to the tip of the AFM uh, device. And, and this flexibility of this probe particle is actually what allows this uh, really high resolution that we observe this in these images. Another kind of problem in terms of machine learning with uh, the AFM is that it's incredibly costly in terms of time. It might take a full day to get a, a good, good image. So instead, uh, we simulate the AFM imaging process. Uh, our model is one that where the, this particle interacts with the sample through a Lennard Charles potential plus an el electrostatic potential, uh, and then uh, interacts with the tip through a spring force. So the uh, pipeline of the uh, simulation process that we have some molecular geometry, then we allow the probe particle to relax uh, in the force field uh, of the molecule, and then we take these particle trajectories uh, and integrate them with some theoretical formula to get the actual uh, signal of frequency shift that one would get out of uh, an actual experiment. And we have implemented this uh, on GPU so that we can actually get up to about 50 simulations per second, so several orders of magnitude faster than uh, experiments. And of the machine learning model, we use a convolutional neural network the input uh, is a stack of 10 uh, these delta uh, f slices uh, at different heights. These are passed through a series of filters, starting with some 3D convolutions, going down to smaller uh, resolution, and then decoded back to into some higher resolution. Um, we have designed several different descriptors uh, that uh, encode several different uh, physical properties that we might be interested in. The, the height map uh, is an isosurface of the force field surrounding the molecule. The Van der Waals spheres representation is uh, these sort of uh, familiar representations of uh, all the atoms as 
poles uh, with their uh, Van der Waals radii. And this atomic disks representation is more of an abstract uh, representation where uh, each atom is represented by a conical dot at, at the location of the atom. And one more thing that we are interested in is the electrostatic potential around around the molecule. So this electrostatic map is actually a, a component of the electrostatic force field surrounding mo the molecule, which is calculated at the surface of this height map so that we get this sort of three-dimensional representation. For some details of the model, it's this kind of encoder decoder, so decoder type network that it was uh, talked about in the previous lecture as well. Uh, to add to that integration, uh, also this is also a kind of computation, computationally attractive because we can go from this uh, really big feature ma maps to uh, small feature maps, uh, which makes it computationally significantly uh, more efficient. And we can also uh, increase the size of the feature space that we go from four uh, feature maps in the first layers to up to 64 feature maps uh, in, in this so more sort of ab abstract space. Uh, we uh, implement the model with Keras with TensorFlow backend. The objective function is a mean squared loss calculated over all the pixels of the output map. We train the model on uh, about five to 6,000 molecules uh, with 20 rotations for each, which gives us about 100,000 training ex examples. And we use several kind of uh, regularization uh, on the input AFM images, uh, random noise and some cutouts like one can see here, uh, some random pixel shifts uh, of the of the uh, delta F map uh, and randomizing the scanning height. Now for some results. Uh, for the positional or spatial predictions, we actually split the model into three, or the decoder part of the model into three different parts, each of which decodes a different uh, descriptor. And I chose just one molecule here, this dibenzer, dianthrene, whatever, uh, to illustrate the kind of things that we this model can do well, uh, and maybe not so well. So we are comparing here left to right uh, the prediction with the reference uh, so we can see that there's a remark remarkable similarity between between the two. We can see uh, see clearly, for example, the carbon rings uh, in the one of us this representation. Uh, the kind of things that uh, are not so well represented are the more like small atoms, like the hydrogens around the carbon rings, uh, are mostly lost. Uh, actually completely lost in, in the uh, atomic disk representation and not very well represented in the Van der Waals spheres representation. And also the carbon ring uh, atoms uh, that are close to the sulfurs, which are much bigger, are not captured very well. And here are a few more examples which are perhaps more representative of the kind of things that we are uh, trying to predict or the, these kind of molecules that are highly three-dimensional. Uh, and we can see the agreements is very good in all cases. And then question is, of course, can we do this on real experimental data? Uh, with experiments, the problem is, of course, that we don't know what the correct label should be. Uh, so what we do instead is calculate this uh, descriptor for experimental, experimental data. We have here five dis different experiments on the on this camphor molecule and then we find some matching configurations from simulations by matching these uh one of our representations uh, between the two to allow us to find some uh, possible at least plausible uh, configurations for the molecule now this is not exactly what we want to do with this model, but uh, it's it is just so that this, uh, we can actually get something reasonable uh, from also experimental data. And it's not just us with 
feed along with our simulation data. And then for the electrostatic prediction, uh, our first attempt is just to this do the similar same thing, except now just two outputs uh, with the height map and the electrostatic map. Uh, but the results are slightly underwhelming. Uh, again, comparing the left to right, uh, we are mostly get the charge sign right uh, in regions, but sometimes we completely uh, get, get it also wrong. The height map prediction is fairly accurate. But we had an another idea uh, in this regard. One thing that is known from uh, AFM experiments is that the AFM image is highly, uh, or that, uh, the, uh, the image uh, depends uh, very, is very sensitive uh, to the charge of the probe particle tip. Uh, so here's two images of the same system, one image with the CNO tip and one with the CO tip, and we can see that the distortion of the image is uh, significantly different. So we thought to leverage this idea by feeding actually two inputs to the model, uh, one image with a negative tip and one with a positive tip, uh, which gives us uh, like an explicit uh, difference between caused by the actually the electrostatic interaction, which we hope would uh, give us more accurate results on the electrostatic, electrostatic prediction, uh, and it does. So comparing now, we can see that we can get almost all of the details uh, be, uh, between the prediction and the reference. But it should be noted here that there's a significant, significant experimental uh, challenge here, because uh, in the simulation we are free to assume that these uh, slices are exactly aligned between the two uh, different images. But uh, in real experiment, it might not be that easy to go and find the same configuration again. Uh, uh, and then just to point out some, some future directions that we are trying to uh, go into. So these, these representations are still fairly abstract in terms of uh, what we are trying to represent, because what we actually want to get out is actually the exact coordinates of the atoms. Th so we are trying uh, looking at the model which could uh, extract the atom positions as really just a list of list of X, Y, Z positions. And another thing that we're interested in is uh, actually predicting the elements. So in just instead of just some blobs, uh, we could group the uh, atoms based on their elements or some other property. And this would significantly help with, uh, for example, uh, identifying uh, an unknown molecule from, from an image. So in conclusion, we have designed a machine learning model for predicting various properties or features from AF images. We get uh, good performance on simulated images, uh, but there are still some uh, challenges in uh, experimenting. So, in general. And this concludes my presentation. If there are any questions. Thank you very much for the very nice talk. So, the talk's open for questions. So here's one. Hi, thank you very much for the nice talk. So uh, I understand that in the AFM measurements, some of the features in the images can result uh, from uh, the oscillation of the flexible tip as a kind of artifact. Mm. Is that something that you have observed in your simulations or can you reproduce that and teach that to the model? Uh, you mean uh, oscillations of this uh, probe yes, particle? Yes, between different states, or which uh, would cause some kind of like a ridge f uh, formation in the image. Mm, this is not something that we model uh, in, in our simulation model. Uh, so I can really say I'm not very well uh, acquainted with the actual exper experimental side of things. So
So, any other questions? No, I see no more questions, and I think with regard to time, maybe we go ahead. So let's first thank the speaker again. Thank you.